Welcome everyone to the latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm your host, Jim Dempsey. Well, welcome everyone to this next episode of Jim and Java. I'm always excited to be here to answer your fundraising questions. We are always out there. You can reach out to us at devfstrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. If you're not on Twitter, you can reach us by email at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And uh, of course, be sure to subscribe to this channel where you'll find other broadcasts of Jim and Java as well as other very effective videos and resources. So let's jump right in to our first question. Our first question is from Jim in State College, Pennsylvania. And Jim asks, what are the most frequently asked questions donors have about nonprofit organizations? Well, Jim, that's a great question. And one of the most frequently asked questions really seems to be related to how do you do what you do? So in other words, understanding, first of all, they need to have an understanding of what your organization does. But before that, they also, I believe, have to have an understanding of the problem. Too often, our donors don't have a good grasp of the problem that exists and why or our organization was started in the first place. You know that your organization, whether that be six months ago or 60 years ago, your organization was meant to make a difference. It was started to solve a problem, whatever that problem is in our society, in our world. And it is important, especially if that problem continues to exist or if that problem has gotten worse over the years, it's really important for you to have a, a good message and to be able to communicate how that problem is continuing to exist, continuing to, to survive, and why your organization is targeting that particular problem, whether it be homelessness, human trafficking, other social causes that you may be um, addressing. It's important that your donor has a good understanding. Then they need to understand what is it that your organization does. I've talked so often about being unique. What is it that makes your organization different from other organizations and it's important to understand once again what does the donor believe what do they feel what makes them weep and pound the table and it's so important for you to have a good grasp on what are their interests and then how do those how do their interests and your interests cross where do they meet where do they merge where do they intersect because that's where you want to begin to build the bridge and build the relationship on that on those particular things those particular items those things that are similar to each other and where the passions are at together so it is so important that you have a good uh uh, program, good efforts, good strategies, those things are important, but having the basic understanding of who you are and what you do is so important to our donor and what we hope to accomplish. They're going to ask you things like, how do you perform your functions? How do you do your programs, your projects? What is it about you that makes you different, makes you unique? And I would definitely emphasize those kinds of things that make you different because those are the things that are going to most excite your donors. And they're going to be asking you tough questions sometimes. Don't be afraid to answer the tough questions. and. Honestly, if we really sincerely want our donors to be owners, to be investors, to take ownership in our organization and be concerned about us, be concerned that our door is going to stay open, are we going to be able to pay our staff, are we going to be able to accomplish our goals, do the things we want to do, they're going to need to have questions answered. So don't be afraid 
of their questions, address them head on. Many people, especially major donors, come from an entrepreneur's background and they understand what it's like to start an organization from scratch. And so even if your organization is 60 years old, for them to have uh, an understanding of how your organization started and how you got to this point is so important for them because they will actually have great respect for what you've done and your accomplishments. So those are the kinds of questions you're going to get. Jim, I hope that helped you in uh, answering your question. Let's move on to our next question. Our next question is from Pete in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Pete asks, what percentage of time should a CEO spend on doing development and fundraising? Well, Pete, that's a great question, and I really believe it's important to have an understanding of the concept of development as well as fundraising, because development and fundraising are not the same thing. Fundraising is a component of development, but development also has two other components. That's public relations and recruitment. Now, we, we oftentimes gravitate gravitate towards the fundraising because that is actually receiving the gifts. But remember, getting your message out to people is extremely important. You may feel like you are one of the best kept secrets out there and public relations is so important. Take advantage of every opportunity you can to speak before other individuals, uh, make sure that you are utilizing different mediums such as email marketing, direct mail, or phone calls, visits to people. If you've got opportunities to speak before churches, before public um, organizations such as Kiwanis, a Rotary Club, Chamber of Commerce, take advantage of those opportunities. It gives you a great, uh, great opportunity to get your message out there and get it before people. And then recruitment, nonprofit organizations run on volunteers. Volunteers can be one of the major lifebloods with funding, finances of a nonprofit organization. And of course, fundraising and actually raising funds is so vitally important. That is really the gasoline that keeps your car running is, uh, is the money that's developed within that. So those kinds of things are extremely uh, important. And when we're talking about public relations, recruitment, and fundraising, it is my belief and my strong belief that 80% of a CEO's time should be spent in development. Now that's not 80% of a fundraising professional or your director of development's time, that is of your CEO. Now you may feel like, wow, that is terribly unrealistic, but I can tell you some of the most effective CEOs spend 80% of their time in the area of public relations, recruitment, and fundraising. If you look at any major university today, you'll find that they are employing that 80-20 principle, is that 80% of the time of a university president, of a chancellor, is raising money. And so it's also getting their message out, shaking hands, meeting with people, it's relationship building. All those things are so important to that role. So you don't have to just go to your CEO or if you're a CEO, you don't need to just automatically get to 80%, but slowly begin to chip away. Now, I think you would be surprised if you really looked at your schedule. You'd find that if you looked at all three of those areas, public relations, recruitment, and fundraising, you'd find that you probably spend more time than you think you do. You may respond to letters from individuals who have questions, that's public relations. You may interview individuals for positions, or you may recruit volunteers or part-time individuals. That's also considered part of development because those individuals oftentimes turn into donors as well too. So I think you would be surprised, but start out with 20, 30, 40%, then get to 60%, then get to 70 and 80%. And I think you will find that doing that over time, you'll be able to have a better grasp of development and you'll probably find that you enjoy the relationship building and those aspects of development more than you thought you would. 
So I know that 80% may scare off uh, many a CEO, but if, if you really hope to accomplish your mission for your organization, you need to spend the time and take the time that it takes to be able to develop relationships with people and those relationships will lead to large gifts for your organization and will sustain your organization over time. So I hope that answered your question. Uh, I appreciate it so much, Pete, your question. And uh, thank you so much for that one. And I wish you the best as you're working with your CEO in that area. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our broadcast of Jim and Java. Uh, once again, if you need to reach us, you can reach me via email at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And if you're on Twitter, you can reach us at devfstrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. And as I always say, we are here to help you increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.